Amen. Thank you, Rabbi Highland and worship team. It's just been a time of We've been going over, or I have been going over the First John a letter, and um, I don't know when you had received a letter, but generally you don't tend to break it up and, and just read paragraph and then sit down, wait a week, and then read another paragraph, sit down, and maybe wait a couple hours and read the rest of the letter No, you, uh, for, for a time uh, during the summer in between school breaks we wrote letters to one another of course yeah 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 yeah. we um, had phone calls too but I really appreciated those letters you can't unless you're a creeper and recording your phone calls I mean you're you, you can't really play back those messages but you can reread a letter a sweet letter that was thought thoughtfully put together, and my wife is no exception to that. She writes wonderful letters, and I would read them over and over again and just and look forward to our next conversation. It was really cool. The letter of John is a letter that one should not just read a sentence or a verse here and there. We want to appreciate, when we look at, a, at Scripture, it's particularly the epistles, they were all letters. And we have to think about that. We have to consider it. They are not long to read. Maybe it takes 20 minutes at the most, and you could probably read it a couple times. But you want to try with all diligence to understand what the author was trying to communicate. It's no different here with 1 John. What was John trying to communicate? It's just a handful of chapters. It takes 20 minutes to read. Now, with that said, unfortunately, I'm not going to read the whole thing. <laughs> I'm just going to read you the snippet, but I just wanted to remind you that this is such an amazing, amazing letter that all of you should, this week, Take the time to read. Guarantee you will fall in love with, with some of the verses that you probably didn't realize it was in there. We're going to read su one such passage today. And it's in First, oh, there's a marker. First John chapter 2. This is where we continued or left off. Verse 18 to 24. It says, children, it is the last hour. And just as you have heard that Antichrist, or we're, from here on out we're going to call Anti-Messiah, Anti-Messiah is coming. Even now many Anti-Messiahs have appeared. From this we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not really of us. For if they had been of us, they would have remained with us, but they went out so that it would, have, it would be shown they all are not of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you all know. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it, and because no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar but the one who denies that Yeshua is the Messiah? This is the anti-Messiah, the one who denies the Father and the Son. Underline, underline that in your Bible. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father, and the one who confesses the Son has the Father also. As for you, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning, if what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. Let me pray for one moment for you. And God, I pray, Lord, that you may your truth penetrate and, and our mind what you have for us. Consider. And even in our discerning. 
little passage. The Antichrist. Plural in the truth. Um, over to 2 Thessalonians. Revelation, the same author who wrote 1 John that we're reading. Um, the second Thessalonians talking about the same thing. An anti-Messiah. Paul here of our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, disturbed either by a spirit or a message or a letter as if from us. Wait, I got five minutes. A lot of pauses, but here we go. The day of the Lord, this concept of God coming. All of the apostles who have written had that one belief. Why? Well, because Yeshua said so. He's coming back. And so they called it the day of the Lord. When everything is revealed, when he shows up, boom, it's over. So that's what's happening right now, okay? To the effect of the day of the Lord, let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. Let's pause there again. The great apostasy is this idea, again, it's a shared thing. It's not just, it, it, it isn't just Paul that talks about the great apostasy or the great going out. Yeshua mentions it and other apostles mentions it. But this idea of everyone falling away, a great many falling away and rejecting Yeshua. Hear me? People that were in assembly, if you look around, a majority of you walking out and denying Yeshua. This is what it's talking about, okay? Apostasy has to come first. This great apostasy, this falling out, of falling away. And the man of lawlessness, now we're, now we're getting to the, to the main topic, the anti-Messiah, and the man of lawlessness, another name for him, the lawless one, not obedient to God, but his own. The man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, another title, many titles. In fact, if you read Revelations chapter 12, 13, you hear the beast, another title. And you guys have heard the mark of the beast. Be careful reading <laughs> the book of Revelation. Whenever reading any kind of prophetic writing, please, 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 do it with, with some, some good study and some people around you. Um, don't try to put definitive... Uh, things and dates to it specifically because sometimes we can get in error when reading prophetic writing let's keep moving verse four i think i have a few minutes left who opposes talking about that the anti-messiah who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called god and object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. Here he is, the man of lawlessness. This is what he would do. Not only reject God or reject every single God, lower G, of this earth, he would proclaim himself as God. We have some hints about this man of lawlessness. Okay? Do you not remember that while I was still with you, I was telling you these things? Communicated more than once. And you know what restrains him now so that in his time he will be revealed. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Who's restraining him? God. It's his timing. It's not the man of lawlessness timing. It's God's timing. Read more of that in the book of Revelation. Then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will slay with the breath of his mouth and bring to an end by the appearance of his coming. Again, the day of the Lord. How will he be destroyed? With the mere breath of God. That is, 
the one, verse 9, the one who is com- who's coming is in accord to the activity of Satan. You'll read this in, in chapter 13 also in Revelation, the great serpent. He's the one speaking and controlling and empowering the beast or the lawless one. That is, the one who is coming is in accord with the activity of Satan, with all power and signs and false wonders, and with all the deception of wickedness for those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth as to be saved. Just a few more verses, two more verses. For this reason, God will send upon them a deluding influence so that they will believe what is false. In order that they all may be judged who did not receive, believe the truth, but took pleasure in wickedness. God would, will give them over to their own delusion. Heavy. The man of lawlessness, real deal. He has not yet come. The Lord has not come. Many have thought that he had come and put a name to him. I, anyone put a name to anyone? Be careful. Be careful. Read and study and just be careful to put names on people. Yes. We're not here to, um, to be on the lookout for the man of lawlessness. That's not our vigilance. That's not our priority. I'll share with you the rest of the verses. That's not our priority. We do have a priority. Okay? Point two. The anti-Messiahs. If I could refer to verse 18 and 19 again of 1 John, it says this, Children, it is the last hour, just as you have heard, that the anti-Messiah, singular, is coming. Even now, many anti-Messiahs, many, have come, have appeared. From this we know that it is the last hour. Many anti-Messiahs. They went out from us. They were not really of us, but they had been of us. They would have remained with us, but they went out so that it would be shown that they are not of us. This is a, a more generalized view of someone who is against Yeshua. And we've known some. I've known some who were just, have known the truth and now hate God. Hate the idea of Yeshua, who had once loved and followed and now had embraced the lie and is rejecting and is against and trying to pull people away from that message. The very idea of an antichrist or anti messiah here in general is one who would want to pull others away from the truth. Okay? In Matthew chapter 24, verse 5, Yeshua says this, For many will come in my name claiming, I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 24, it says this, Yeshua continues, For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders, and they would deceive even the elect, the saints, you, those who believe if that were possible. Anti-messiahs are great seducers. They are very convincing of pulling you away. Stand on guard. Okay? One of the jobs of a shepherd is to be on the lookout for wolves and sheep's clothing. In fact, in Matthew chapter 5, 7 verse 15 it says beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly are ravenous wolves we were talking about this during youth group oh man that was another heavy topic (laughs) youth group last thursday you know we don't shy away from the truth here and so i had the pleasure i've been having the pleasure of 
teaching the kids, teaching the kids. I've been the interim youth pastor for the past uh, month, and I've got a, a couple more weeks to, to have fun with those kids. But we were talking about this and just defining some of the role of what, what a leader or a pastor in this, in the church, and specifically in here, Bay Tikva, would be. And that we have to identify, and scripturally we have to identify with those who would try to take you away, those who would try to lead you out of here, whether they are willful in saying, hey, I am anti-Yeshua, I am anti-God, but oftentimes they just have an agenda of themselves. They have a girl that they're chasing, a relationship. Wolf in sheep's clothing. They're here for the wrong reason. They have, <laughs> they're trying to sell something, whatever that may be a book or an idea, a product, I don't know, some oils. N- nothing against the oil people, sorry. Um, but if that's the only agenda, I'm sorry. If you're not here to worship with us and be in community with us, I'm watching. You're a wolf. Others are watching in sheep's clothing, just here to prey on people. If you have a pet theology that's way out there and you're just trying to push that on people and not Messiah, not Yeshua, you're a wolf in sheep's clothing. We're going to be watching. That's not what we want in our community. We've got to be vigilant. You know, this practice of of being vigilant and and watching out for anti man, this is just a heavy topic. Do you guys feel it? Am I I the only one sweating right now? This is very uncomfortable. Um, (laughs) But this is the reality around us. I mean, uh, Ken was just talking about just what's out there, and that's no surprise what's out there. But we ought to also be vigilant in here. What's happening in here? There will be attacks coming in here. There are anti-Messiahs loose who are against God. This is what the verses are saying. They went out from us. They rejected the truth. They were from us. It was happening then that first John that John was talking about, and it's still happening now. I was I was on uh, I had listened to the snippet of Matt Chandler, which opened up a whole lot of um, Matt Chandler confessed to um, just some above reproach, and I think their their church handled it very well, and. He, it, 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 nothing me- sexual conduct or any misconduct or anything like that. But it opened up the YouTube algorithm. I was watching it on YouTube. It opened up the YouTube, YouTube algorithm for other documentaries of other church leaders that had all kinds of other things. And I got sucked into one of them. And it was an hour long. I'm like, oh my goodness. But it was very fascinating and well done. Um, but I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. This slip is such a, a gradual thing and a tick, a tick, a leader of all things, a leader of a megachurch, led astray in rejecting Messiah. Which leads me to the third point, which leads me to the hope. And this is really the the part I really want to park on. And that is, as for you, verse 24, as for you, let let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. Many here in this room are believers and come to know Yeshua, their Messiah. Come to know the truth of Messiah. Um, it, it talks about here, 
in verse 22, who is the liar but the one who denies that Yeshua is the Messiah? This is the anti-Messiah, the one who denies the Father and the Son. And whoever denies the Son does not have the Father. The one who confesses the Son has the Father also. You, many of you have come to know the truth. And these verses are saying, in these times, and then even, it's saying, abide in the truth. Remain in the truth. As I was reflecting on just that word, abide, I couldn't help but think about my littlest child, my littlest son, Samuel, who abides with his mom all the time. Oftentimes seen in the back, uh, on her back, she's, she's got a little backpack, very content there, right? Just looking around, right? And he's mobile now, and he's running around. However, still very close to mom, very close to mom. You can't, you can't, uh, he can't, even with me, stay too long with me because mom's got to be close. And he falls asleep in her, in, in her arms. And just that closeness and intimacy, and every time she, he needs to know that, that mom's there. When I think about abide, I th- I'm thinking about just that relationship. Are we abiding Messiah that way? That closeness of, of that love and that revelation that, oh my goodness, you are the truth, the son of the living God. You have saved me from death and you have given me new life and I want to praise you and I want to thank you and I want to remain in that truth because if we're not abiding, we will be carried off. We will be taken away. It's not the vigilance of anti-Messiahs. It's the vigilance of who our Messiah is. That's what these verses are saying. Are we vigilant and are we abiding and found to be faithful to him? That's the message right now for you. All this other stuff about anti-Messiahs are well and good and beneficial. But are you specifically abiding in Messiah right now? Clinging to every, every single word and know the truth of him. Prepare to live for him. You find Messiah, you find Yeshua, the truth, you also find God. Romans 10 9, it says if, that if you confess with your mouth that Yeshua is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It says here, it says here, in verse 23, the one who confesses the Son, I admit, I confess, this is the truth. I'm not letting it go. Have you come to know the truth? Some of you may, are probably still searching right now. I invite you to come to know him. This is the truth. And he says it himself, I am the way to God. I am the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father but through me. Are you abiding in Messiah? Some of you have doubts about who the Messiah is. I just invite you to to just step forward and not literally, not now. After after this, I encourage you to keep seeking. That's what we're supposed to do. Seek. And God says, you will find. Come seek. Talk to somebody. There's a lot of somebodies here. We got Rabbi Highland. He'll talk to you all day about it. I'll talk to you about it. Go look for Wes. He loves talking about it. There's other people here. Tom, he'll talk to you about it. 
He'll lead you to the truth. Many here will lead you to the truth. Keep seeking the truth. For those of you here, which is the majority, that have come to know the truth, again, the message for you is, abide in the truth. Do not be taken by anti-Messiahs and their, and their messages and their seduction and their display of all kinds of things that will pull you away but remain in the truth of his word. And for those of you who rejected Messiah and come here for a different reason, I want to say this. Not too late to come to the truth. We'll recognize it. We are vigilant. We'll lovingly push you away from this community. Wow, that's that is not an easy sermon to preach. It's a heavy topic. A lot of things going on. But at the beginning I said, read the entire letter. I wish I had 12 hours to just preach on the whole letter. Because it's just an amazing letter. Read the entire letter. Oh, and come to know and worship the truth who is Yeshua. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for the revelation of truth in and doing your will. Thank you so much, Lord, for this Bay Tikva. I thank you for everyone here, Lord, that is sincerely... I pray, Lord, that you would reveal your will to them. I pray, Lord, that they would just enjoy you, who you are. God, I pray, Lord, that they would just they would seek to go deeper.